What's the word, y'all? Trey Weaver did it again, man. And I'm excited about Detroit Piston basketball for the first time in a minute. That's not true. I was excited when they drafted Kate. But I mean, like, this is like from a team aspect. More than just one singular player, the Detroit Pistons are about to be sneaky decent. See, I say decent, because I, I can't I can't really know. It's still a super young roster, even with the recent trade. But there's a lot of things on this roster that makes me excited. So a couple days ago, I woke up to two huge notifications on my phone. The first one was Ime Yudoka getting suspended for a season. And the second was Bojan Bogdanovic getting traded to the Pistons. Something nobody saw coming except for Troy Weaver himself. This man Danny Ainge always talking like he has to win every single trade objectively lost i mean they say it's because they didn't want to take on uh, uh more than one year of salary but the fact that they got zero picks in this trade is crazy you got kelly olenic who in utah might be kind of nice considering i thought that the miami heat the phoenix Sun, there are a lot of teams miami heat phoenix sun 76ers these are teams that i thought really really could have used Bojan bogdanovich and there's probably like five of them i thought he would potentially go to and detroit wasn't on that list let's take a step back can i get one minute to rant about the first piece of news I saw on my phone, like I said, it was the email Yudoka stuff. I'm amazed at how low NBA media has got. The original report came out that he had a whatever with someone within the organization. And we had people on Twitter going to look up the female staffers of the Boston Celtics and tweeting out pictures of them, knowing nothing about who was involved in anything. So now these people and their family are going viral on Twitter when they're just employees of the system and have nothing to do with the controversy. That's my rant. Be better. Be better. Anyway, um, yeah, Trey Weaver and that, that resume is looking pretty good. Now there's one miss. I would say miss right now. This is a make or break season for Killian Hayes. I think everybody that has watched basketball understands that he has not been good and he was drafted with seventh, eighth overall. And I was just looking at people drafted after him. There's one guy that I think would have fit perfectly. But again, if you don't draft Killian Hayes and there's this butterfly effect, you end up with Kay Cunningham with the first overall pick, yada, yada, yada. This offseason, I thought was really good. The Detroit Pistons look extremely, at the bare minimum, fun. At the end of last season, in a video, it was just thrown in somewhere. I said, hey, out of the teams that are towards the bottom of the standings, I think that the Orlando Magic has the best potential to jump up as far as total wins go. And I still do really love the Orlando Magic, don't get me wrong, especially with Paolo there. But Detroit made moves this offseason that made me think, they they can look a lot better this year. I think the over under for them was 27 and a half last time I checked. Now that was before the Bojan trade, so it might have been moved a little bit. So they won 23 last season. That's what K missing about 20 games. And then Jeremy Grant, who was their best player, only played like 47. If the line is still at 27 and a half, I feel pretty good. Obviously, Jeremy's all the way out west right now, but still, I think that they replaced Jeremy Grant pretty solidly. I was thinking about doing a video about the 2021 NBA draft class, and I might still do this video but i start videos so often for this channel and decided to scrap them where i watched one random game of every single player drafted and i did this for k kind of of course being the first overall pick and i put his total number of games i don't remember how many it was into the the random number generator and i landed on his career high game which is crazy against the the denver nuggets and boy oh boy <laughs> boy oh boy like of course i've watched k this season but that that game was not in the back of my mind he was on a whole nother level and and if you look at his numbers for the second half of the season or the last couple months of the season when he really found his footing, he's about to be crazy in year number two. Of course, these players are not the same and play styles are different, but I, I kind of look at the way LaMelo Ball looked in his rookie season and how he came back in year number two and made an all-star game. And I'm thinking to myself, why can't K Cunningham do the same? Because I'm assuming his overall production is about to go up because he's got more weapons around him. The spacing on the roster that he played with last season was terrible. They were one of the worst three-point shooting teams in all of basketball last year. What did they do this offseason? This is why I like Trey Weaver. This offseason, he decided to get some veterans on the team, which is dope. I, I don't really love teams that go young where everybody's young, where the oldest player is a 26-year-old and he trying to teach people about the league. No. So he got some vets within the organization, and those vets are shooters. Alec Burks has been really good for the New York Knicks over the last couple seasons. And I think he shot like 38, 39% from three last year. Bojan Bogdanovic has been an basically 40% three-point shooter since he came into the league. They got him on the team now. And if you look at their projected starting lineup, and I say projected because you know things can change throughout uh, training camp and stuff, it's Cade, of course. 
I, I've read some things where like the shooting guard position is still up in the air. I know it's easy for me and you to look at them drafting Jaden Ivy and say automatically these two guys, Kay Cunningham and Jaden Ivy, are going to be starting together. But I read something on the Athletic, and I'm pretty sure it's by James Edwards III, where he was saying that he thinks that the Detroit Pistons might look to add Alec Burks to that starting lineup to start the season and see how that looks. And again, for spacing purposes. Don't really hate the idea. Listen, Jaden Ivey is going to be fine if he's coming off the bench for the first 20 or so games he's get his foot under him. Like, he will be a starter in this league. You don't have to immediately come in and jump into that spot unless you legitimately earn it. And if you've been around the channel for some, for some time, you know I love the idea of no matter where a person is drafted, I'm not immediately giving him the keys to the organization. You still have to work for it. So if Alec Burks has a better training camp, start Alec Burks. Make Jaden Ivey come in and work his way into that starting lineup. I don't know if that's going to be the case, but either way, I like both options. And then you got Sadiq Bay at the three. Don't forget, he put up a 50 piece earlier this season. Um, he took a step back this year when it came to his efficiency and, and the games that I was just watching, like the K Cunningham career high, some ill advised shots in there. And you would expect with having more weapons around him, he won't be uh, looked at to be more of a shot creator. Because I don't know if that's really in his game just yet. Bojak Bogdanovic been a pro you are you understand that and then you got isaiah stewart which is interesting because he plays summer league this season and i watched a couple of those games in summer league i was legitimately in the thomas and max center and i think the first shot he took in that first summer league game he had like all backboard on the three and the crowd was like ooh. and then the second shot he took was like a great release bro splash and I guess he did some shooting in some of his previous stops at Washington or high school, but when he got to the Detroit Pistons, they needed him to be a, a real center, so he became a real center. And now there's some people on the roster that's like, maybe we need Isaiah Stewart to shoot the ball a little bit more from the perimeter because he extended Marvin Bagley. And then they, they brought in Jalen Duran, which I completely forgot about until this exact second. Oh my God, what a, what a great trade that was. And with Killian Hayes, bro, I don't even know what to expect. Like, I was on the hype train too. I don't watch any college ball. I don't watch any international ball. So like, when the draft came around, I didn't know much about Killian Hayes other than the things that I've read or other than the things that I've heard in podcasts. And I was listening to Kevin O'Connor a ton and he had me on the hype train. Kevin O'Connor made me think that Killian Hayes was the perfect pick. He ain't done nothing. He's done nothing. You know what I'm saying? Um, so this is a make or break season for him. They also signed Kevin Knox. Guess a make or break season and a half, two seasons for Kevin Knox. Uh, because bro ain't really been on nothing. Came into the league as a shooter. And last year, I think he shot 20 something percent from three. So there are still a few projects and people to worry about, I guess. But overall, I think you're about to see some super competent basketball. And a lot of that is at the helm with Kay Cunningham taking the next step. They also got Isaiah Livers. And I, I like Isaiah Livers' game. I think he's going to be a real rotational piece this season. And I, I don't know what to expect, but like, that guy can who? Kay with spacing can be a different monster. And that's the way I'm looking at this roster. Cade with space, it could be a different monster. I, I like how Trey Weaver saw what they, they lacked last season, which is spacing for their star player, and went out to get some of that without really dedicating a ton of their cap for the next couple seasons. Because if I'm not mistaken, Alec Burks' contract is up after this year. Boyan Bogdanovich is a one-year rental. Um, uh, New Orleans Noel is making a small amount of money and is not under contract for a long time. So they made some trades to get future assets because they got more assets assets in the Jeremy Grant trade. I think it's a Milwaukee Bucks pick for 2025, so maybe not a huge asset, but they got more assets and they got cheap and expiring deals to help them for the right now. Because if Kay Cunningham is as good as a lot of us think he is, and Jaden Ivey is as good as a lot of us think he can be, I feel okay with everything else falling into place. Yeah, maybe I would want one of my front court players to be a, like a super duper core untouchable piece. I don't think Isaiah Stewart is that right now. Maybe Jalen Duran becomes that. Kimber Walker's technically still on the roster. I'm sure he'll get bought out, but like training camp is in like a day, ain't it? Or media day or something? Like, what's going on with that? What if Kimber Walker actually stays? Killian, go fight against Kimber Walker for an actual rotation spot. I don't know. Kimber Walker, guess what he can do? He can shoot. <laughs> That's more spacing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we just had Corey Joe playing a ton of minutes with Kay Cunningham. Who's better? No, 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 tell me who's better. At this point, I really don't know. That's it. If you only care about basketball, this is the cue that you can get out of here. But for the rest of y'all, I, I want to apologize for the lack of uploads throughout the offseason. I know we did a, a ton during free agency and stuff like that. Sometimes as a YouTuber, you get too bogged down with the algorithm and, and growth and things like that. And I think it can be healthy to an ex extent. But with this channel, it became unhealthy. Where I would have ideas of videos and I'd be like... Nah, that's not gonna hit the, the recommended page. When in reality, 
I'm at the point where I shouldn't care. Let's just talk some hoops. So my apologies, we gonna be better. Leaving a like does help though. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it helps me get there. Just even if the video is not really made to hit the recommended section, if you left a like, I'm just saying, it, it, it hires the chances, but it's up to you.